So in this video we're going to have a look at the equations of motion for a uniform acceleration. Um, first thing we need to know of course then is what do we mean by a uniform acceleration and that's one that's got a constant acceleration. So what I've got here is I've got a velocity, this is time graph, and we've got the velocity increasing in a uniform way here. And we're going to use this graph to come up with two equations of motion. And then once we've got those two, we're going to derive a further two, although there is a third, but we don't need it for the specification we're doing. Right, so let's get on with that. First thing we're going to have a look at is the acceleration. Now, we should know that the acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So if we want to know what the acceleration is on this, uh, it is going to be the gradient of this line. And we work gradients out by the difference in y divided by the difference in x. And here the difference in y is going to be uh, v minus u. And the difference in the time from 0 up to t is t. So that's our acceleration. And uh, if you look in your formula booklets, this equation is written out as v equals u plus a t. So that's just simply multiplying the t up to here and adding u to both sides. And the second equation we're going to look for is one that's going to represent the displacement. And if we know we've got a velocity time graph, then the area bound between the line and the time axis here is going to be the dis total displacement. Now, if we, want to, we want to do a little trick with this, because this is a trapezium shape. But if we treat our trapezium here as a rectangle, where this area here will be equal to this area here, and, and a rectangle is just ever so easy to calculate the area of. So what we need to know, of course, though, is where this line meets on the velocity axis, and that is going to be the average velocity. So that point there, that velocity there is going to be v plus u over 2. And then if I come along and I multiply that by the time, and that will give me my area as this. And in, again, in the formula sheet, it's just written out as S, the displacement, is equal to 1 half bracket V plus U times T. Right, now that we've got our first two equations, V equals U plus AT, and S equals a half V plus U times T. What we can now do is we can use these two in order to create another two. Because if you'll notice in the first one, this one hasn't got anything to do with the displacement. The S isn't in there. Our second one hasn't got uh, the acceleration in it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create one that doesn't have V in it. This is how we do it. So from our first equation, we can see that V equals U plus AT. And what we're going to do is substitute that into the second equation. So I'm going to write the second equation out. S equals one half V, but I'm not going to write V because V is equal to U plus AT, and then plus U, and then multiply that by T. Now if I multiply out the brackets, let's multiply it out by the half first. So that will give me S equals, oh sorry, uh, there's um, two u's inside the bracket, so s equals, let's just put that in, let's do every step, 2u plus a t times t. Now let's multiply out by the half, so s equals u plus a half a t, all multiplied by t, and now s is now going to equal, multiplying out by the t, u t plus a half a t squared and that there is our third equation of motion that doesn't have the final velocity in it.
OK, now finally we're going to do our fourth equation. Um, we're going to do the same trick again, except this time we want to have an equation that doesn't have t in it. So again, what we're going to now do is we're going to take our first equation, and I'm going to rearrange it to make t the subject. Then once I've done that, I'm going to substitute the t into our second equation and manipulate it to get it into the final form that we want. So let's take the first equation. V equals u plus at. So v equals u plus at. So if I was rearranging this, I could get v minus u equals at. And then if I divide through by a, that will tell me that the t is equal to v minus u over a. And that's our starting point. So now we have this equation. I'm going to substitute it into our second equation over here. So let's write this one out. So we've got S equals one half bracket V plus U times T, but T is actually going to be V minus U over A. Because we're dividing through by two and we're dividing through by A, I could write this out a little nicer. So we could go S equals V plus U times V minus U all over 2A. Now I'm going to take the 2A and multiply up to bring it over to this side. So let's come and write it down here. So we've got now 2AS equals V plus U times V minus U. Now if I, what I'm going to do is multiply out the brackets. So first times first, first times second, second times first, second times second. And let's see how that comes out. So that gives me 2AS is equal to V squared minus U squared plus UV minus UV. And hopefully what you can see now is the plus UV and the minus UV are going to cancel out. So that leaves me with, let's write it up here, 2AS equals V squared minus U squared. So what we've got here is, of course, this in the brackets is a difference between two squares. And now I'm just going to rearrange that to give me V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. And that there is our final equation of motion. Okay, and finally, we're just going to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we're just going to uh, see how we use the equations of motions to solve a problem. So what we're going to do is, I'm just going to get a black pen up. Um, when we, we've got a, a problem, I want you to write the letters SUVAT down the side of your paper. And when we're going to read the question, and we're going to fill in the parts of the equation, uh, the parts of that we know, and we'll fill them in next to it. So, an aeroplane accelerates from rest at 2.4 meters per second squared. To take off, it needs to have a velocity of 150 meters per second. How long does the runway need to be? So, if we come back <coughs> and uh, we read our question again. An aeroplane accelerates from rest. Well, rest tells me then my initial velocity is zero meters per second. At 2.4 meters per second squared. So that tells me that my acceleration, 2.4 meters per second squared. To take off, it needs to have a velocity of 150 meters per second. So that will be my final velocity, 150 meters per second. And it's now asking me how long does the runway need to be, and that is going to be the displacement. And I'm just going to put a question mark next to that one, because that's what I need to be able to work out. So from the question, you can see that I haven't got any information about the time. So now what I do is I come along and I have a look at my equations of motion, and I choose an equation of motion that doesn't have time in it. And that's my fourth one down at the bottom. So what we now do is we write out our equation, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. 
and I'm after the displacement, so I'm going to rearrange this so I can get the displacement as the subject. So that gives me 2AS is equal to V squared minus U squared. Now if I divide through by 2A, so that will tell me that S is equal to V squared minus U squared all over 2A. Now when I've got the equation how I need it, what I'm going to do is substitute the values in. So we come along and we get uh, V squared is 150, so S is 150 squared, and U squared is 0, so we can, we can ignore that. And then we divide through by 2 times my acceleration, which is 2.4. And then I enter those numbers into the calculator, and we get an answer. I haven't got a calculator with me, so you'll just have to do that one yourself.